Hey friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Joanne Barandi and I'm a happy crafter. What I've got for you today is I'm gonna show you some techniques on how I made this cute little bunny. Look, isn't he adorable? It's so easy to make a little craft like this. Bienvenidos todos a mi canal de YouTube. Estoy muy contenta que están aquí conmigo compartiendo este proyecto conmigo. All right, friends. I drew this bunny pattern because I had seen him somewhere last year. I don't remember, but I had sketched a little bunny and uh, this year I decided to draw it out and it's kind of wonky, but it's gonna work. But the pattern that I'll trace off for you will be very, very precise. It won't be wonky. First thing that I did was I cut uh, my bunny out of, what was it, quarter inch plywood, Eric? Yeah, that was, so I had quarter inch uh, sanded plywood from Home Depot. I was working on another project and I had some left over and that's what you ended up with. Friends, it worked great. You should have seen me. I hadn't used a jigsaw in almost 40 years and I was like, <laughs> But guess what? I did it. I did it. And after the first rough one, Eric um, guided me on the second one and it turned out so much better. Okay, the first thing you need to do is trace your pattern. I didn't have any transfer paper, but I made a copy of my pattern and I cu cut it out to where I needed to to make my, to guide my uh, paint lines with. So I'm just gonna trace the bunny head, that's all I need. And then the little pants. Okay, and I'm just gonna trace off right here. This is how I get started. And I'm not gonna go over the basics of base coating this because I wanna get onto the details to show you how, friends, it's easy to do and you can do it. Okay, the first thing I did was, and I'm gonna list all the paints that I used. I'm using Apple Barrel Warm Buff for my little bunny. I didn't wanna make him white, so I'm just gonna show you how easy this paint goes on to this piece. How much was this piece, Eric, more or less? Under I think it was 15 or $20 for, I think it might've been $20 for a sanded piece of four by eight or four by two, I can't remember the size. It's been laying around for months, so. Oh, but the paint goes on, look, it just goes on so good. And I'm just using a big flat brush to do this with, but you can use any brush. But getting back to the plywood, even just that scrap that I had, you were still able to make three of these out of that. Yes, three of them. Oh my goodness, that's, to me, that was so exciting. and. I hope that in the future I'll be um, bringing you more wooden crafts because now I'm excited. You got I'm bit so by the bug. I got bit by the bug is right. But uh, what I wanted to point out to you is this project can be made out of um, uh, cardboard, matting board, styrofoam too, friends. Just uh, whatever. If you don't have wood, use whatever you have. Be creative. You don't have to... Um, Invest in the wood if you don't have to. But I just wanted to share this with you and... Um, we know you just wanted to use power tools. I did, oh, I did, oh, I was... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you should have seen me. Okay, so there's construction going on around behind Eric's home. So there was all this noise, all these delivery people and all these contractors and here I am with my lumberjack apron and I was going to town and they're probably wondering what's what are these people doing especially with my big ridiculous cinema camera oh yeah <laughs> while Eric was filming okay I'm just going to show you basically how well that goes on I did two coats okay so you don't have to worry about the lines you, you'll come over and detail it but I did the um all the the warm buff first which was the arms the face and the feet then i did the hat and then i did the pants and the shirt okay i'm gonna put this aside and i'm gonna grab the one that's already ready to be detailed because i want to go into the detailing okay 
all I did was put two coats, and I'll list the colors of these paints for you. I put two coats of the blue, the green, and the white. Now what, I'm, what I did for the pants is I cut out my little, um, my little stencil, and I started with, got kind of wonky on me, but let's see. I started with the middle one. Now Eric suggested that I had needed to have started with just one and moved it around, and maybe that would have been a good idea, but at the time, this is the way I chose to do it. So there was no turning back. Also on the original one too, you forgot to create some sort of center line to yeah, define the two separate legs. But I will once I get that on there. Okay. Uh, see how right here where the shirt is, it needs to be aligned with the little pants. So I cannot begin to tell you how much fun it, it was to cut on wood. I was kind of scared at first. I was, but um, it all worked out, and Eric was very patient with me, and then he showed me what I had done wrong and what I needed to do for, on my curves and stuff, and then he cut one out, and of course, it was very next to perfect, uh, but it was so much fun, and the wind was blowing like y'all wouldn't believe, and we were just out there being happy campers. Where is my black? Here it is. Okay, and to stencil, remember I use a um, stencil brush. And we try to list everything that my mom uses in the videos down below in the description. Anybody that's ever looking for her email address to send anything or you wanna know what's used in the video, we try and leave links for everything. Yes, friends. And like I said, on the pattern itself, I'll list a copy of all the paints that I use since I'm going to skip the base coating part on this one. And I should give credit to Leanna. She's the one that actually posts the links. Yeah, my daughter-in-law is always in the background helping out. She is always, always willing to help. And if you ever uh, ask her about something or other, she'll respond to you as best she can and try to find, find out for you. So I appreciate, I appreciate my family. We have so much fun and this wouldn't be possible if we didn't all work together. All right, now I'm gonna use the little glitter, a little black glitter. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glitter. Even though it's black, I just think that it, it's just such a cool pop right there. All right, and I'm gonna point something out to you. Notice how there's a little space in between there. Well, I couldn't cut out my stencil all the way because then it would detach. So I'm just coming back and putting dots and filling that area in. So it'll be okay. Now, which way is this going? And if this isn't... And I'm sure typically you'd probably let that drive. That first one? Mm-hmm. No. Are you good to go right into this? <laughs> well, I know with you, you would know. <laughs> Not me. Queen, queen of, of impatience. <laughs> I want to see. See how I kind of went on? I'll just have to be careful there. I'll show you how I'll go about that. Yeah, I like to, I like to get it done which I'm sure most crafters are like me too. Time goes so quickly these days. It does. You know, being retired, you don't even know what day of the week it is, but you're busy. Uh, we're busy every day, it seems like. I'm not even retired, I'm busy every day. What are you talking about? <laughs> so yeah, I can only imagine what it feels like for you. Ah. It's like, but I'm glad that we stay active and we stay busy. It's so good for our health and our, our mental state, too. We stay very active, my husband and I. All right, since I went over right there with my stencil, I'm going to come back and... Isn't that going to mess your train? No, because I'm still going to put a dot in between them. Okay. It'll be all right. Okay. I'm going to make it work. <laughs> 
Oh, my goodness. You're the professional. I'm just the camera guy. What do I know? No, I'm not a professional. I just love to do this. And I try to find shortcuts in everything. And this all started when my kids were little um, because I didn't have a lot of time. And I love to craft, so I had to hustle and find shortcuts, but yet still put out a good product. I mean, and this really doesn't even matter, this glitter, but it makes a difference to me. So, see? It would take too long for me, I think, but not for, you know, just do what works for you. It would take too long to have to do each square individually to me, it seems like. All right, so let's go on to... Each diamond. Each diamond. Oh, what did I say, square? <laughs> It's close. Ah, it's sorry like a for it. Square. Uh, here we go. Square skew. Okay. A diamond. So, for the shirt, I just um, used. Oh, I still need to. Darn. What did you do? I forgot. See, I'll have to fix that little nick right there. I forgot his little uh, suspenders. Let's get the suspenders on. Let's see. About right there. Now I'm going to have to use another dry brush because I put that one in the water. Oh well. I'm trying to channel my inner Steve Urkel <laughs> for these suspenders. I just thought this was so cute and I just, um, last year I ran out of time. I didn't have time to make him but this year he's a must and you can use him. Now I put him on this little um, base there but he would look so cute on a reef. I think he would be precious. Oh, I pulled that up. I shouldn't have pulled that up. But if you make a mistake, everything can be fixed. Friends, it'll be all right. Don't stress. You know this firsthand because I showed you with the jigsaw. <laughs> oh, friends, you should have been out there. <laughs> it was funny. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I kind of made a mess of things, but thank goodness Eric fixed it for me. Well, I showed you how to, kind of how you show everybody. If you make mistakes, you can fix it. It's the same with that. You can do the same thing. It's just yes. all about being patient. It, it's all about cutting these little curves that I got a little impatient and uh, sort of kind of made a little mess out of it. But Eric showed me, and now I know what, what not to do. See, look, that, that didn't take long at all. All right, let's go on to the nose before I do the eyes, because I really want to show you, because I went ahead and did some shading on the eyes. Now, I cut out me a little stencil for the nose, and I'm going to use... I think the light pink. On the nose, I'm using the cameo pink, and then I'm gonna come in and shade it with a little bit darker pink. Is everyone out there working on Christmas? I mean, Christmas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dang, lady. Cut. Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> you are retired. You don't even know what season you're in. <laughs> Let's just skip summer, huh? Is is everyone out there working on their Easter crafts already? Because I know some people are working on their uh, St. Patrick's. There's probably people working on their Christmas and July stuff already. I know. I can't wait. I've got so much stuff I want to do. Oh, I'm so excited. But um, I just knew that I had to get this done. First. Okay, I'm going to use Apple Barrel Pure Pink to shade it. And let's see, I'm going to use this little brush here. Since this is a bigger piece, I uh, busted out a step stool so I could get higher 
Hopefully this footage turns Hopefully out Hopefully okay. you don't you don't fall. Nah. <laughs> Normally I'll let this dry a little bit, but we're on camera, so I'm not going to let it dry, but it's going to be all right. I might have gone a shade, a little shade darker. Yeah, because I really can't see it. I know, because normally I let it dry and then come back and shade it. But I still wanted to show you how easy it is. And I know Walmart has these dry brushes. Um, and I was going to get a picture of them, and I just got Is side it not tracked. the same ones you normally use? Yeah, it is. But, you know, uh, I'm using a lot more of them today. And they sell the pack in all different sizes. They're the dry brush. People use these for ceramics. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's how I inherited or started collecting them. There. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right, I'll put that aside. And I used, um, let me see, I'm just going to leave that there just in case. For the eyes, that's the main thing I wanted to show you. So that I would get them pretty much close to the same size. I went ahead and cut out a stencil because those I just drew on. And, uh, well, maybe I'll give that a minute to dry. Maybe not. I think I can do it. I think it'll be all right. On those, I just did them freehand, and if you look real close, they're not all perfect, but, and neither are these, but I'm going to try to get close. I'm just going to draw my outline. I'm not going to stencil them because I'm going to fill them in. Okay, that's just something for me to go by. And it might help others out, too. Of course, if you want to stencil them, that's great. But since I was going to shade these, uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint them. And I'm using, let's see, uh, I think this, this brush will work for me. And this is just a, a, one of those round little... I don't know what number it is. It is a, just an ultimate round brush. <laughs> That's what it says. I'm sure that helped. Uh, all right. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Whatever you do, friends, use a round brush, not a square one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that'll help. Sorry, I'm on a row being a little smart but today you are a little smart butt every day but that's okay we love you anyway <laughs> life would be boring without me that's right in a minute I'm going to show you my technique for um, the ears and the little bow tie I wanted it to be kind of 3D. And I actually got some contacts. I got I got one in both eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I have one on each eye. I got them yesterday. I'm so excited. I can see. Normally y'all see me stencil these, but not today. Friends, today I'm actually filling it in with the brush. And if it's not perfect, it'll be okay when I put my lashes on there. And I forgot how much fun it was to paint eyes and detail them. See how one's still a little bit off? one eyeball, but it's going to be fixed right here. Okay, so I'm going to um, let that dry for just a minute. Right now I'm going to go on to the uh, 
I think I'm going to go on to the shading technique right quick. Okay, when you dry brush, you try to take off as much from the ends as possible. Because if you get too much, then it'll kind of upset your project there. And this is what I do, just rub it around, or brush it rather. I still think it's a little thick. This is much easier and faster than having to shade it with a brush. And you still get a good look, I think. You can go as dark as you want to or as light as you want to. It is totally up to you. Let me go. I always like to start on the lighter side of things and then keep taking looks at it and see where to go yes, from there. Yes, exactly. Because you can always add to it, but it's kind of hard to take away. And when I finished with this completely, I um, sprayed it with... Um, Clear, just a clear coat of a clear uh, spray. Like a spray lacquer? Yes, spray lacquer. There you go. I meant to bring it inside so I could show y'all, but I didn't do that. I had it at the shop because that's where I sprayed. I'm so excited because next week I'm going to be working uh, on my um, dough ornaments. I'm getting ready to do all my Easter dough ornaments. I'm excited about that. See how it starts to come to right here? Yeah, creating some depth with those yes. shadows. I could do it with the shade brush shading, but it'd take forever. It's a little nerve wracking too, because I hadn't done it in a while. But I have found that dry brushing shading is, is so much easier. It's already starting to come to life right there. And I don't follow the rules. I know that there's rules for shading, but I just shade wherever I feel like it. I'm not good at following rules when it comes to painting because it still looks cute, I think. All right, so let's do the little shirt right quick. So you can do this. I know a lot of you will say, I don't think I can do that. Yes, you can. Look how easy this is. And you've never shaded before. And you can put some shading on your project with a dry brush. Simple as that. By the way, I'd like to say thank you to everybody that's been posting their projects on our Facebook group page. I thoroughly enjoy, enjoy everybody's projects. Oh, everybody brings something different to the page and I so appreciate it and enjoy it. I try to comment on everybody and if I've missed you, I'm sorry, but I try to go back and check. Everybody is amazing. You know, one thing that I find so impressive is that people that crochet, that is one thing that I have never, ever been able to do. I tried it and I just made a big old mess. So I know some people have been crocheting some cute little projects and I just admire that. You were also trying it way, way back before there was any information out there like YouTube these yes, days. Yes, so exactly. Sure somebody out there can probably <laughs> teach you how to do it. I know, exactly, you're, you're right. And that's kind of what the point of this channel is. It's I know. Okay, I'm using a, a flat shader. Now shaders come in all sizes and all, these are two different kinds. This is a rounded off one, which will work too. And this is a flat one. This is the one I use the most. This isn't the particular one that I use, but I'm gonna make it work. And I dip it in the water first. And now I'm gonna to go to the paint, just, just the edge of it. Ooh, 
really easy. Now, I wonder if this is dry. So I can, yeah, I'll go ahead and do the white on there. Well, not really the white, the brown, because it'll stand out too much. How about we do brown? Shading is so easy to do with a, you just put the edge of your paintbrush in there. Oh, it's looking so cute already. Oh my goodness. And are you gonna tell them about the changes you're gonna make for the final stencil for the feet? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I messed up, friend. I didn't really mess up. The feet look good, but keep in mind this, this whole pattern she came up with is hand drawn, so. From another one that I saw. Yeah, yeah exactly. So she just drew it based off of something else she saw. And I didn't have it in front of me because I never could find it again after I saw it last year. I just sketched it. So I was at my kitchen counter and I was, and I didn't even have the right paper to draw it on. I do now though. Okay, well what I was getting to is the fact that. <laughs> Go ahead. If you cut it the way, if we left it alone and you got your own and you cut it, it would sit with a tilt to the right, like a leaning tower because mm -hmm. that's what it was doing when I saw it. She was able to fix this one by shimming up the foot, yes. but we're gonna make sure that the- The pattern is gonna be cut off evenly right here. We'll make here. sure it's level, so. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just going to detail the, um, the hands. And the feet. Now you can shade in here or you can come in with your dry brush like that. And Okay, now the face. I'm just going to do the, the, the face, the cheeks. give any detail on what the paint you're using? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm using the, uh, no, it was the pure pink for the cheeks, and I just did it with a dry brush. Okay, for the um, eyelashes, I'm just using this long, long brush here. Um, it's just a craft brush. I think it's gonna work good for me. Let's see. It's nice strokes. Then I usually do this at the bottom. Come in. Okay, now detail the eyes right quick. Use the white first. This is really, really easy to do.
Now, with the same brush, you're going to come in with the blue. Pretty much have the detail on your eye done. All you need is your little dots out of white. Let's do that first. And I just use the end of this brush to make the little dots on the eyes, and you've got your eyes done. It'll be all right. It's a little off, but we'll make it work. Again, with the end of the brush, you've got your dots. And now my whiskers. There we go. Real easy to do. Outline your nose. All right, you've got your face done. Now I've already got his ears, his ears done. And I'm going to show you how I did them before I glue these on there. Let me go ahead and glue those on there. I'm going to go ahead and glue his ears on. And I'll show you in just a minute how they were made. All right. Goes one ear. And here goes the other. They're too cute. And I'm just using a little piece of rickrack right here to go over it. I wish these things, these threads would, would disappear on the glue gun, glue sticks. All right. There we go.
Okay, so you got your ears. Let's just right quick give him some dots. And I'm just using the same blue that I used for the hat, cool blue, apple barrel. And I'm using my little sponge brush here. And I'm just going to give him a few dots, not really in any order. One another one. All right, and let's just do. I'm going to give one right there. All right, friends, and then I'm just going to throw a little glitter on it, and we'll go on to his bow tie that's already ready. And I'm going to show you in a minute how I made it. Okay, I've got a bow tie all ready for him, and I just stuck my hands in that blue. And I'm going to glue it on there. And I'm going to go ahead and put a dot in the middle, right in the center of the bow tie. Well, all right. And he is just dry brushed. I've got that, those threads all over me. He is just dry brushed with brown. The bow tie is. Just a little dry brushing is all it needs. Normally I do that before I glue it on. But got a little over anxious here. It doesn't take much to give it a little detail. And it's still going to look cute. I'll go back over it and do my shading. OK. I think that we've got him all detailed. What do you think, Eric? Looks like it. All right. Briefly, I'm just going to show you how I made the, um, the ears. Okay, friends, I use, this is lightweight watercolor paper, and that's what I cut the ears out of, and the bow tie. And I just traced it on there, and just cut it out. It's real thin, real easy to work with. And I just put on a really, really light coat. A light coat of this of the brown. Just kind of did a wash on it. Not really making it too dark and not perfect. My fingers are all blue now. All 
Okay. And it'll tend to curl up on you like this until it dries, then it dries flat. Once it's dry, what I did is I took the dry brush and the pink. I think I used the lighter pink, this one. I used the Cameo pink. And I came in in the middle. Not in any order, just kind of filled it in like that. And then I blended in some darker pink to give it the shading that it needed. Okay, once I did that, I just took it and I just rolled it. You roll it like that. And then you just set it aside and it'll curl up the, as, as curly as you want it to be. Just set it aside and let it dry and then it's ready. There you go. Now here's your bunny friends. If you choose to put it on a base, you can get you a base from Walmart or Dollar Tree and then you can decorate it any way you want. Thanks for joining me today, friends. Appreciate, thanks for joining me today, friends. Appreciate your patience. Love y'all. Keep on doing what makes you fabulous. <music>